Hey everyone, in this video I will be explaining you how a single enzyme is able to determine about the existence of our life. Very basics of our life is the replication process where a DNA, a one DNA strand is becoming another DNA strand so thereby a cell is able to proliferate. So cell proliferation it needs cell division and in cell division there will be DNA replication which is the most essential thing. So in order to, in order to make DNA so we really need one thing and that is deoxyribonucleotides and how we are going to synthesize deoxyribonucleotides. So in order to make those deoxyribonucleotides so we need an enzyme called ribonucleotide reductase. So this video is all about how exactly this ribonucleotide reductase determines our existence and what are the processes that are going on and also I will explain you about regulation of ribonucleotide reductase and some of the applied aspects especially the pharmacological agents which will be acting on ribonucleotide reductase. Alright, so here is the reaction that I have written about ribonucleotide reductase enzymes function. So we have the uh, nucleotide diphosphate that I have written here. So there is a ribose, this is the ribose molecule and the base is attached to the first carbon here and there are two phosphates attached to the fifth carbon of ribose. So basically this is a nucleotide diphosphate. Note that this is a general name here, nucleotide diphosphate is a general name. So it can be any nucleotide diphosphate, so it can be adenine, dipho uh, uh, adenine diphosphate molecule that is ADP. It can be cytidine diphosphate, CDP, it can be guanidine diphosphate that is GDP or it can be uridine diphosphate that is UDP. So depending on the base that is present here, so you can replace that NDP with anything. So it can be ADP, GDP, CDP or UDP. So in general I have written it as NDP that is nucleotide diphosphate because this is a nucleotide here base is there, sugar is there and two phosphates attached to the sugar that is why this is a diphosphate molecule. Now to synthesize DNA you need deoxynucleotide diphosphate that means ribose sugar that is present here which is a pentose sugar this has to be in deoxy form and how to make this ribose into deoxyribose for that you need to remove this oxygen atom present in this hydroxyl group that is in the second carbon. See the second carbon of ribose has got hydroxyl group here. If you remove this oxygen atom, so that means you are creating a deoxyribose sugar. So that is as simple as that. And how this will be done in our body? For that you need this enzyme called ribonucleotide reductase. What this ribonucleotide reductase does is, it is going to use a, a low molecular weight protein called thioredoxin in its reduced state. As you can see thioredoxin it has got two thiol groups that is SH and SH. Now those two protons present in these two thiol groups they will be removed by ribonucleotide reductase enzyme. So basically thioredoxin SH SH that is uh, two protons will be given to ribonucleotide reductase and then ribonucleotide reductase is going to insert those two protons and take this oxygen out and put it as water molecule. So this is how thioredoxin getting into the reaction and will come out of the reaction as oxidized thioredoxin where you can see there is a disulfide bridge created. Overall what ribonucleotide reductase has done here is it is going to take this oxygen out, take two protons from here and release water molecule and at that time what you have done is basically we have created a deoxy form of ribose. As you can see second carbon do not have hydroxyl group now and this molecule is a deoxynucleotide diphosphate. So like this ADP can be converted to DADP that is adenine diphosphate can be converted to deoxyadenine diphosphate, CDP can be converted to DCDP, UDP can be converted to DUDP and GDP can be converted to DGDP. So this is what is the job of ribonucleotide reductase. So what happened here is thioredoxin is oxidized here 
Now the oxidized thyroidoxin it has to be converted back into redu its reduced form because we need to maintain sufficient quantities of thyroidoxin so that in the cell so that ribonucleotide reductase continue to do its function. So how this is made possible? Now the oxidized thyroidoxin will be converted back into its reduced form by an enzyme called thyroidoxin reductase. Now this thyroidoxin reductase it uses two protons coming from NADPH plus H plus and oxidize NADPH plus H plus into NADP plus while it is reducing thyroidoxin back into its reduced form and that is the job of thyroidoxin reductase enzyme. There is one more molecule that can be used here by ribonucleotide reductase and that is glutaridoxin. So instead of thyroidoxin, so glutaridoxin can also be used and glutaridoxin also has two SH groups and at the end of the reaction you get oxidized glutaridoxin similar to thyroidoxin and that oxidized glutaridoxin again it can be converted back, to, back into reduced glutaridoxin by an enzyme called glutaridoxin reductase. Glutaridoxin reductase can take care of oxidized glutaridoxin into reduced glutaridoxin. So it means two molecules, one is thyroidoxin or glutaridoxin can give protons to ribonucleotide reductase thereby it can convert NDP into DNDP molecule. Now there are a few drugs that can inhibit these, this particular reaction thereby they act as an anti-cancer drugs. Anti-cancer drugs basically they target cell cycle whether it is G1 phase, G2 phase, M phase or S phase overall they damage the DNA and thereby replication can be halted thereby cell division can be halted. Now there, there are some drugs here which will inhibit ribonucleotide reductase directly or indirectly. One of the first drug that I would like to say here is hydroxyurea. This hydroxyurea it is inhibiting ribonucleotide reductase and we use this hydroxyurea in some myeloproliferative disorders and thereby replication process can be halted because ribonucleotide reductase it will be inhibited by hydroxyurea. And also note that hydroxyurea is used in the treatment of sickle cell anemia and that's because hydroxyurea through its nitric oxide mediated mechanism it is going to increase fetal hemoglobin thereby because it is going to induce gamma chains and thereby increases fetal hemoglobin levels and that decreases sickling process in sickle cell anemia and improves the disease condition. Another drug that I would like to say here is motexafin gadolinium. This motexafin gadolinium it is an inhibitor of thyroidoxin reductase and ribonucleotide reductase. It can inhibit both the enzymes. By inhibiting thyroidoxin reductase, it is going to decrease the availability of reduced thyroidoxin and also directly inhibiting ribonucleotide reductase. So overall what this drug does, it is going to decrease conversion of NDP into DNDP thereby ultimately it is going to affect replication process and motexafin gadolinium it is used in treatment of brain tumors. Now the other drug that I would like to say here related with this particular reaction is gemcitabin. Now gemcitabin it is a nucleoside analog and it irreversibly inhibits ribonucleotide reductase enzyme thereby it decreases conversion of NDP into DNDP. These are some of the drugs that can act on ribonucleotide reductase and that is hydroxyurea, metaxafin gadolinium and gemcitabine. Okay? So alright now. Let me explain to you how ribonucleotide reductase is regulated. Now the regulation of ribonucleotide reductase is a very finely controlled mechanism and I would say this is one of the complicated regulation, uh, regulatory mechanism out of all the enzymes that we see in biochemistry. Now regulation of uh, ribonucleotide reductase it will be done by multiple uh, uh, nucleotide uh, triphosphate molecules or its deoxy forms of nucleotide triphosphates. Now let me make it very simple here and explain you how exactly this ribonucleotide reductase enzyme is regulated. Now there are two molecules that you need to remember here ultimately. So one is the positive allosteric modulator on ribonucleotide reductase is ATP. Adenosine triphosphate is a positive allosteric modulator of ribonucleotide reductase. It means when you have plenty of ATPs that, that ATP will go and activate ribonucleotide reductase. 
Now the negative modulator, ultimate uh, means uh, one of the negative modulator which can control entire ribonucleotide reductase enzyme and that is the DATP molecules. DATP molecules that is deoxyadenosine hydrophosphate is a negative allosteric modulator, strong negative allosteric modulator that means it is going to control the entire ribonucleotide reductase enzyme. Of course, we have other deoxynucleotide triphosphate forms which can which will they will act either as positive or negative modulators on ribonucleotide reductase enzyme but let me keep it very simple here instead of complicating in, by introducing all those things and complicating the material here okay now this ribonucleotide reductase itself it is a it has two subunits and these two subunits they will be coded by two different genes present in different chromosomes now when these two subunits they combine means become dimerization or dimer form so the active site of this particular enzyme it will be shared by both the subunits and also the regulatory site is also shared by both the subunits now so to simply to simply ex ex uh, explain in a simple way so i have written a structure like this which is not necessarily the similar structure you may find it in uh, in reality just for uh, understanding purpose here, so I just drawn a structure like this and there are two sites here, one is the active site, that's where the catalysis is going on and the other is a regulatory site, that's where the regulatory molecules will go and bind. Okay, now whenever ATP levels are more in the cell, that is ATP is acting as a positive modulator, so I'll write ATP here, when ATP binds to the regulatory site, during that time GDP sorry CDP and UDPs will bind to the active site so CDP will come come and bind to the active site and CDP will go out of the reaction as DCDP molecule and at the same time UDP comes into the reaction UDP is binding to this active site and it will go out as DUDP molecules Basically now what we got is CDP is converted to DCDP, UDP is converted to DUDP. So DCDP can go and form DCTP, cytidine triphosphate, deoxycytidine triphosphate and that deoxycytidine triphosphate it can get into DNA synthesis there. Okay, that's how we got DCTP. Now DUDP further it will be converted to DUMP molecule and DUMP molecule will be converted to DTMP molecule and that is deoxythymidine monophosphate and deoxythymidine monophosphate furthermore it will be converted to deoxythymidine diphosphate and then it will be converted into deoxythymidine triphosphate and this deoxythymidine triphosphate it can now go into DNA formation now we got two deoxynucleotide triphosphates for DNA synthesis but we need two more and that is deoxyadenine triphosphate and deoxyguanidine triphosphate we need to make them now whenever there is increase in the levels of DTTPs and that DTP what it does it is going to come and bind to the regulatory site here so it is going to come and bind to a regulatory site that means it is going to replace ATP from the regulatory site and now DTTP is binding here and now this DTTP it is a, acting as a positive modulator down uh, on this particular regulatory site and thereby when DTTP is present here it is going to bring GDP molecules here GDP molecules will bind to the active site and GDP will come out of the reaction as DGDP molecules deoxyguanosine diphosphate now this deoxyguanosine diphosphate will be converted to deoxyguanosine triphosphate and that deoxyguanosine triphosphate now it can go into dna synthesis now whenever there is accumulation of deoxyguanosine triphosphate so what it does this deoxyguanosine triphosphate now it will come and bind to the regulatory site and it's going to replace deoxy Thymidine triphosphate now on that place you have deoxyguanosine triphosphate on the regulatory site. When you have deoxyguanosine triphosphate in the regulatory site during that time ADP will come and bind to the active site 
active site of an enzyme is now bound with ADP. Now ADP is coming out of the reaction as D ADP molecule, deoxyadenosine triphosphate. Now deoxyadenosine triphosphate will be converted to deoxyadenosine, sorry, deoxyadenosine diphosphate converted to deoxyadenosine triphosphate and deoxyadenosine triphosphate. Now it can go into DNA synthesis. Now overall what we got? We got four, all four molecules for DNA synthesis. We have DTTPs, DCTP, DGTP and DATP. So we have all four of them. So whenever DATP accumulates and this DATP now, it will go and bind to the regulator site. It will go and bind to regulator site and it's going to replace DGTP and now your DATP binds here. When the DATP binds to the regulator site, as you have seen, DATP is a strong allosteric negative modulator. That means it is going to decrease the activity of ribonucleotide reductase. That means whenever DATP binds here to the regulator site and act negatively, by that time you have already synthesized sufficient quantities of deoxynucleotide triphosphates, all four of them. DTTPs, DCTP, D, GTP and DATPs, all of them are sufficiently synthesized. That is why ribonucleotide reductase activity, it decreases. Okay. So this is how ribonucleotide reductase enzyme activity is controlled. So this is a fine regulation of ribonucleotide reductase. It looks complicated compared to any other enzyme regulation in biochemistry, but if you go slowly one by one so it will be, it is not as complicated as it seems to be so it, first thing you really need to remember is when atp binds to the regulator site cdp and udp comes in they will go out as d cdp and d uh, udps d udp ultimately converted to d ttp d cdp converted to d ctp which gets into dna d ttp gets into dna formation and d ttp when it accumulates will come and bind to the regulatory site and replace ATP molecule. When DC TTP binds to regulatory site during that time GDP comes in, go out as DGDP and that becomes DGTPs. When DGTP accumulates, that will come and replace D TTP molecule. And during that time, it, GDP will come and bind there. Now, uh, sorry, ADP will come and bind there. When ADP is going out as a DADP, is converted to DATPs and that gets into DNA synthesis whenever there is accumulation of DATP and that DATP will come and bind to the regulatory site and that's a negative modulator and this is how ribonucleotide reductase can be regulated. This is all about ribonucleotide reductase enzyme. I hope this has helped you in understanding how exactly ribonucleotide reductase determines the existence of this entire life especially because it is going to provide much needed deoxynucleotide triphosphates to make DNA. To, for DNA to be synthesized, you really need a optimum activity of ribonucleotide reductase. Thanks for watching. Please say, uh, share this video with your friends so that this video, they will be benefited by this particular information just in case if they have any difficulty in understanding this concept.